Welcome back. So just before this, I was playing Pokemon. Just, you know, going around doing some Dynamax battles and stuff yeah. like that in the Wildlands. Well, no, not now, Altina. No, no, no. But that is relevant. The now. So yeah, I was running around and Sarah could hear it and could hear like, like giant Pokemon just making random noises all over the place. You know how it is if you played Pokemon. But loads of noises. So Sarah could hear it. But then I switched over this ready to record. And Altini was just standing there going, Now. Now. And then Sarah just pipes up going, I don't like that Pokemon. I was like, what? I don't like that Pokemon. Just keep saying now. I'm like, that's Altina, not a Pokemon. It's like, what? Are you playing Pokemon? It's like, no. No, it's Altina. So, yeah, Altina is a um, Pokemon now. It has been decided. Yes, indeed. Right, but anyway, previous part, we um, collected a flower. Yes, and we need to get an event over here, which I have skipped through several things because I have gone off and actually got loads of stuff sorted in between the parts in terms of materials for quests and actually getting some sepith. A lot of sepith. So at one point we'll jump over to the new... Whoa, 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 whoa mate. Whoa, mate. Whoa. I retreat. am busy. Oh my. So I am busy discussing what is going on with turn. everyone down in the comments. Us. Jeez. So rude. You deserve to be vanished from existence. So, yes, what was I saying? I don't know, but we'll, we'll sw switch over to that save once the opportunity arises. Mm. So, anyway. Event. Return to camp, obviously. So all I'm saying is you need to fill her up. No! I need to catch up with them. One thing I, I, I have noticed here, though. Oh. Let's turn off the high speed for now. That Ashen Kid and Kruger, huh? <laughs> Not bad, I guess. But... What are you doing here, McBurn? I think I'll just focus on the target for now. I'll leave those pain in the ass experiments to him. Things are gonna get interesting if our masked friend starts moving too. Hmm, I wonder if that relates to something I've already seen. So I do need to bring that up at some point. A few people know, but... I have a theory brewing in the background. But I wasn't gonna bring it up till it was relevant. Name of the game, everyone. Right, because here... If we actually turn on turbo, it looks like the bikes are going at a proper speed. Rather than... They feel a bit too slow, but when you turn it on turbo... It feels like a decent speed. If that makes sense. Does anyone else agree? You may disagree, but... Although it does make it look like... Reen's tire isn't moving at the front, that's the only issue there. But... To me, it's like, this feels like the right speed for the bikes. So, we'll leave it at that. So, why did he tell us to ride ahead of them? What could they be talking about? Something secret, no doubt. I agree, it is concerning, but please keep the bike steady, Yuna. Oh, right. <laughs> oh, the wind feels just lovely. Riding alone, just the two of us. Oh, I mustn't tell Lady Elisa. She would be ever so jealous. I don't, I don't think it's quite that big a deal. But that aside, you can tell me. Hmm? Huh? You said you wanted to ride along with me. There was something you wanted to talk about, right? Something you don't want the students to hear. No. Something you don't want Elisa to hear. You truly have grown a lot. Yes, it is exactly as you say. I came along to help because there was something I wanted to tell you. Does it have something to do with our Roboros? At this point, let me just point out, like, so you know what I mean with the speed. Doesn't that feel slow now? That feels very slow. In part, yes. What I wish to tell you is the tale of a girl. It's a small girl, given the title of Severing Chains. Oh. Ah. A girl who was empty. There was an assassin's organization that had existed since the Dark Ages. The Order of the Moonlight Horse. At the young age of 13, the girl was its second most skilled member. 
The only things she had were her title, which had been passed down to her, and the designation Kruger. Very, very similar to Fee in terms of style here. She spent her days simply carrying out her missions with soulless eyes, an emotionless assassin doll. Then one day, the Order met its end. At the hand of Ouroboros. At the time, the society was still in its early days, and the two groups were in full conflict behind the scenes. But against the combined assault of the Almighty Conflagration, the Blade Lord, and the Steel Maiden, the Moonlight Horse stood no chance. They were nearly completely destroyed. Its members, known as the Thousand Oathbreaker and the Golden Butterfly, became the Fourth Anguis and Enforcer Number Three, respectively. While the Empty Girl was welcomed into the society as Enforcer Number Nine. But even after becoming an Enforcer, the girl's life did not change. She obeyed the requests of the Anguis, performing many missions. She was always free to refuse, but as she knew no other way of life, she simply accepted. But it was through that bleak existence that her bond with the Reinford family came to be. The girl was given a mission by the Sixth Anguis to infiltrate a city named Ruhr in the northeast part of the Empire. The mission required her to meet with a certain person, but a terrible accident occurred. The mission ended in failure. The girl suffered serious injuries, and the other person lost their life. That person was Chairman Arena's husband, Lady Elisa's father. Yeah, and there's the pocket watch we know about. Master Franz Reinfurt. Triple dot. <laughs> Yet Lady Arena saved the girl. The one whose actions resulted in her husband's death. She even gave her a name. I had never had a name before then. Kruger was simply a designator to differentiate me from others who have held the same title. One would simply change their name as the mission required. That was the way of the Order. But Lady Arena gave me the name. Sharon. Suddenly, this empty girl had a place to belong as a maid of the Reinford family. Since that point, I have continued to serve the Reinfords while still belonging to Ouroboros. I was able to do so thanks to the freedom the society grants its enforcers. All of that? Why tell me all that? Why now of all times? This is exactly what I'm thinking. With two ways of thinking. I'm thinking the same way as Reen. Why is she telling Reen now? Why is it significant now? Why does he need to know? What, what impact is it going to have for him right now? But I've also got the theory side of me going like, Why tell me at all, game? Why is this relevant? What is going to happen with her story? Because it's connected to things I was thinking in the previous parts. Your loyalty is going to be tested at some point. That's what I'm feeling from Sharon. Alisa doesn't know any of this, right? <laughs> I simply felt this was a good opportunity. Mm-hmm. Someday, when you feel the need, please tell Lady Alisa. See, this... This is why it feels... See, here, it's like, she's clear, clearly going to have her loyalties tested and she's going to have to betray Elisa, essentially, or the Ryanford group or something like that. But she still wants them to know that she cared about them in some regard. That it's like, okay, I have to do this, but I want you to know I did care. That's what it feels like it's setting up here. For you see, there is the possibility that I may not be there for her. There you go. You get it? <laughs> it is merely a possibility. It's a certainty. It is absolutely impossible for my love and devotion for the chairman and my lady to ever leave me. But? Oh, but of course, if you and Lady Elisa were to become a couple, I would serve you as your own personal maid as well. That's, uh, quite the tempting offer. Whoa! All right, Reen. Thank you for sharing something so important with me. See, now, this is the thing, like what I've mentioned previously with Elisa, this whole idea of Felcom, I haven't really pushed it until this point, I would say, as a canon thing. 
And that's disappointing because the, like, the prospects of the story potential that could be there that's not being utilized if they settled on one canon relationship rather than choose who you want. And it's like, that's where it's disappointing. It's like, no, no, they're sort of leaning towards it now with Elisa. I can feel that definitely. Yeah, they are leaning towards it with Reen. That's a, that's a specific thing I was on about here. We're reading they're definitely leaning towards it now, which is good. But I still feel like they're not going to go through with everything that I want. I want I want to see a relationship with Elisa actually develop and actually be an important thing as part of the story, which is disappointing because they won't because of the whole choose who you want. Because I can still choose Toa as an example, because that's still an option. It's like, ah, oh, you're going to miss so many good story potential things. Like the idea of, Everything that's happening to Reen could affect Elisa and how she sees things, how she do things, how she do things, yeah. And the same, the opposite way round, what Elisa's up to could affect Reen and his judgment and how he wants to do things, especially considering the stuff with Sharon. All that type of stuff and the, the idea of like they have two jobs that keep them apart and that would be so important for what they do and how they treat each other, long distance, all that type of stuff. There's so much more than that that could be explored as part of the story that could be interesting but because because you can choose who you end up with as Reen they can't do that as part of the main story and that's disappointing to me that's why it's like yeah the Elisa stuff isn't canon and that's disappointing yeah yeah Anyway, hopefully that makes sense. Some people get it, some people don't. Some people think I'm still hating on Elisa, which I've never, ever done. I've never done that. Because why would I? Elisa's a great character. It would be interesting to see a relationship between the two of them. Simple as that. You're taking care of me. No, all of us in the old Class 7 for so long. For our everyday life in the dorm. To the crisis during the Civil War. So if there's anything I can do to help you... Please don't hesitate to ask. Me, the other members of Class 7. And of course, Alisa will always be there to help. Master Reen. <laughs> you truly have become dependable. However, for you to say all that to an older woman such as myself is a tad unfair. You're not that much older. Perhaps I should begin serving you as your own personal maid right now. <laughs> Uh, all right, I think that's enough temptation for the time being. Oh, Reen's interested. Name of the game, everyone. One thirty p.m. Just bing bing. Yeah, there's the red flower. Didn't expect scarlet chloroma. Grass. No doubt about it. It's the same grass from two years ago. But red, obviously. Colour's completely different though. You're right, the size and shape are the same. See, I thought it was the same as the ones this in Ark. Maybe maybe it wasn't. Maybe I'm just thinking it is. That crest holds the same mysterious energy that supported former President Croy. You feel the presence of the higher elements here too? Yes, definitely. It's like the forest in Sutherland. Okay, there we go. Now, this cryptid. So, maybe I was right. Could uh, anybody confirm for me? Were the blue flowers that we saw before that boss in the forest where the higher elements were? Was that flower? This flower, but blue. Someone confirm that for me. Don't know how to say that one. It's just like the ones that appeared in the old schoolhouse basement and in the Nord Highlands. That on top of the magic night means that creatures from the Empire are appearing here now too. Again. Why? Is it because they're part of the Empire? But how does that make sense? Sharon, I'm just going to come out and ask you. Can the society do anything like this? Ah. Hmm. Well, let's see. I should say the possibility is not zero. That said, the society generally has a tendency to pursue orbital technology. 
it would be a bit strange for them to suddenly begin using spiritual monsters such as cryptids and dark age constructs like magic knights. Or maybe they're just trying to research, experiment, because we've heard the word experiment several times now. Experiment! I see. Thank you. I feel like I just heard something incredibly confidential in... Well, well, some incredibly confidential information, but very well. The question remains then. Why is Scarlet Plumora... Pleroma? Pleroma. Grass appearing now. Is it possible this is the result of the Zero Child? Alright. Though she's in hiding, perhaps her miraculous power is manifesting again. No way. What, what way? It's been confirmed she no longer has the miraculous power. That intelligence division made sure of that right after the occupation. Her and Lloyd were made into material witnesses too. Besides, I know her. And she's not the kind of girl who do things, do these things. Personality is irrelevant. There's a chance her powers have returned and are currently out of her control. Right. Let's talk here. Because this is clearly connected to the Azure Tree. This is what my mind's going through. Thinking back to like theories I had in the past in Cold Steel 2 when the Azure Tree showed up. So this Zero Child. Clearly they was connected the Azure Tree. Probably, like... Hmm. Hmm. Should I, w should I wait for the old cube house? I don't know what else they're gonna say. I wanna give hints to what my theories are forming right now, and then leave it. Basically, my uh, ideas in my head are Azure Tree, connected to Zero Child, Zero Child, Septarian. Right. There's a chance her powers have returned and are currently out of her control. That's... I'm certain K Bannings has nothing to do with this. Okay, so that's the Zero Child. Huh? Hey, Bannings. I have no idea how to say that. Kia? Kia, maybe? So that is the name of the girl known as the Zero Child. Well, that confirms that. Yes, though her surname is still up for review. She's using his name since she doesn't have any family of her own, yeah? But how long can you be so sure she's not involved? We were contacted by the Governor General just now. It's very clear. He had absolutely no need to worry about the bannings at this time. It's requested we investigate the cryptid and the glass under the assumption the society is involved. Such a request. Thank goodness. He should have just told us that when we saw him. Hmm. Do they know something clearly? <sighs> Why'd this have to happen at the same time as the inspection team's visit? It was like more than simple coincidence to me. Oh yeah, I also, obviously, do not confirm or deny anything I've just said. Obviously. Yeah, now that you mention it. Has the inspection team already entered Crossbell? Oh yes, about that. This is a mechanical noise. Can only mean one thing. It's an airship. Everyone, we're going to go greet our guests. That's going to be an airship. It can't be the courageous because we know its wings have been clipped, which can only mean out of the ones that I know. Is it? Yeah, it's the Pentagrul. Makes sense with Rufus and everything. Unless it's a new one that just looks exactly the same as the Pentagoo. What? Well, that's something you don't see every day. That's the flagship used by the Noble Alliance during Erebonia's Civil War. There you go. Correct. The Pentagoo. I was calling it the Pentagoo. All right. I believe I heard it had been confiscated by the government and given to the Imperial family. Ah. Yeah, they used it to travel for official business. Okay, so it's not to do with Rufus. It's more to do with... Your pro family, which would probably mean the person who's coming here is going to be either the Emperor, it won't be Cedric, it won't be Olivert. So it's going to be the Emperor and his family, or just Alvin. My guess. Wait a second, does that mean the inspection team is... That's right, Governor Regnitz will be on the team as a representative of the Imperial Government. And Lady Arena will represent the economic circles of Erebonia. And let's not forget, Princess Alphen and Prince Oliver will be part of the team too. Oh no, uh, Oliver! He 
It'd be good to see him. One thing I do like is like how, how my theory senses are tingling like crazy right now. I love getting little hints like that. It's just like, ah, oh, so intriguing. The Imperial Family's battleship, Pantagruel. Because I want to talk about my theories with the Azure Tree now. Because my, my thoughts right now is like, is this Zero Child a construct similar to Milium and Altina in some regard? The way she's got a strange name. I would have lined up the crossbell panels differently, like put them on the further to the ones on the right, one panel over. Seems a bit strange. Again, do not confirm or deny anything I'm saying. Because I will play the crossbell games. I want to see how right I was when I get there. Or if I get told in this. Feast your eyes, everyone. The Pantagruel's landing boat has launched. As we speak, it's ferrying the inspection team to the tower's rooftop. Now loading. I cut out the now loading, but then the music would sound weird. First off, we have Governor Carl Regnitz. He oversees the entire Imperial capital of Heimdall and is the first commoner to hold this position. Oh, and here we have the chairman of the Reinford Group, Irina Reinford. It's safe to say there isn't anyone more important than her when it comes to Crossbell's economic industry. Economic. Random goons! Don't know their names. Could it be? Yes, it's Prince Olivert. Rumor has it this isn't his first visit to Crossbell. How has he been here before? See that I know. That's a joke. daughter of the Emperor. She is simply an angel. The young woman with her is gorgeous too. I adore Alfin's dress though. Now loading. Again, I'd skip the now loading, but music would sound weird. That's the princess. She's an angel. The prince is really handsome too. Indeed. It's just such a shame. It's like, she gets this awesome new dress. He seems to just have what he had previously, which is like, I'd want to see him have some new garb that would be amazing. Anyway. Oh, I, I didn't expect to see Princess Alfin here too. I figured your father was going to be here, Mango. Yes, we've fallen behind in terms of gathering information. There are so many non-transparent things for us to inspect. We need to find a way to break through and start our inspection. Hmm. Why are they getting all excited without... Ellie? Okay. They're all nothing but wigglings wagging their tails for the Empire. Don't say that. We all have pride in where we're from. Please fulfill your duties as an agent of Cal. Oh, probably saying that wrong. I'm, I see what's going on here. Hmm. Leave it to me. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Wow, look. Look how pretty the princess is. She's cute, but... Hmm. She's still an invader. I mean, it's, from their point of view, it's like... Yeah, but it's sort of like, at the same time, it's like, she didn't have anything to do with it, it's just, so... I'm <laughs> torn, but I may be leaning closer towards a bad impression. Oh well, nothing can be done about her arrival. If we 
could all just come to a better understanding. You may be right. I, I cannot give up. <laughs> it seems as though our guests have arrived. Is that you, Vita? Is that you? I mean, they could be reusing voice actors, but based on the dress, etc. Is that really you, Vita? The fool and the blazing demon should be nearby as well. Definitely Vita. The original cast has nearly all been swapped out by now. What will you do, Reen? You as well, Emma. That's a nice design that's going on there, though. That big ship is scary. Is it safe? It wasn't going to break out or anything, right? We're fine. As long as we have Big Bro Lloyd, we'll be able to stop it. Is that true? Are his dear friends all? Yeah, there's no doubt. <sighs> right. Is this right? Can I talk about it now? Is the masked individual. Copy. <laughs> Still protecting this place, even if its residents are gone? And the voice actor kind of gives it away. Well then, all we can do is wait for the snake's next move. I'm also curious to find out what the branch campus is capable of. The hair, the voice, kind of gives it away. I want to talk about it, but I can't. Ah, I got little things to talk about at the end of this. Woohoo! Long live Princess Alfin, Empress of my heart. I didn't expect to see Princess Alfin here. Oh, it's Prince Oliver. I haven't seen him in so long. Piero Graven Regnitz, Chairman Arena of the RF Group 2. Well, I guess this is shaping up to be some ritzy shindig, huh? <laughs> been quite some time. I suppose I need to get used to seeing his highness without my brother by his side. After all, by this point, the seventh farmer division is... What's the matter? Is the sight not a pleasant one for you? Why would it be? Yeah, it's true that this isn't very fun for me. How could Speaker McDowell... How come Speaker McDowell isn't with them? Hmm... I figured Elise would be here, too. Now, both her and the princess have become even beautiful. Even more beautiful since I last saw them. <laughs> yeah. But I wonder why I wasn't able to contact her. By the way, are you going to meet up with Chairman Arena? I won't, but Sharon will be. Once I'm done here, I'm planning to accompany the chairman for the remainder of her visit. All I can do is sigh. Operation Birdcage is too weird to even say out loud. To be honest, I may have taken the intelligence division and the room a bit too lightly. Is there really nothing we can do? Nah, don't give up to your dot. I'm sure we'll find something. Randy. No telling how things will end up, but that's better than them for now. Roger that. Got things to talk about. Name of the game, everyone. Two PM. Afterwards, Elisa, Tio, and Sharon said their farewells to Reen and the rest of the camp and headed back to Crossbell City. Tio and Randy left to go work on each of their class field exercises.
Alright, let's get going. Make sure to check your equipment and buy anything else you might need before we head out. We should have time to make a round in the city before we head out onto the East Highway. Oh sure, I understood. Hey Altina, what's going on with these two? I have no idea. They started acting like this as we were watching the inspection team arrive. Is that so? I suppose they each have their concerns, but... Okay, Class 7, we're now resuming our special ops missions. We still need to investigate the cryptid appearance of the Eastern Crossbell Highway. Based on how long the trip there and back will take, it'll be our last activity for the day, so make sure everything else is wrapped up before that. Right. We'll give it our all. Then let's go. Alright, this might be the point. Yep, right. So, this is the point where I'll actually talk about what has happened at some point. Because obviously, I make the intros for these videos. So I needed something in the background. So it's like, I try to avoid looking at the intro for the game, but I do need something in the background. Now, this will point out to you, probably, why I keep saying I don't want to analyze it, I don't want to watch it, I don't want to look at it, I don't want to see it, because if I see it, I'll start theorizing and learn too much, too fast, and it'll just break the game in terms of the fun. So there's a little bit piece of information, a bit, a bit of theory that I've kept hidden for a while. Some people know I've kept it hidden for a while, some people will not, most people will not. But it's related to the mysterious man. Now, during the intro, there is actually a fight going on between Reen and a mysterious man who's wearing a mask, who's got white hair. Now my theory, like r random throwaway theory, when I saw that when I was putting it in the intro, because it is in the intro by the way, it's in, in the background of the, if you look at the third scene at the start, in the background you'll see the fight happening. That's where that is. Because it's like, I've got to put that there, because it's like I've got a theory going on with that now. My theory is, that is Crow. Resurrected. Because I had some theories going on with the idea of resurrection and soul transference or something like that at some point. I was speaking to Valimar at some point. It was one of the parts we were wandering around um, Trista and we were speaking to Valimar. At that point I had theories of resurrection and maybe Reen was the resurrected soul of Drykles and stuff like that. And that's the reason he can get memories and stuff like that. I still feel like there's something in that at this point. I still feel like there is, but I don't know where that's going to lead. But since those theories are still popping around in my head here and there and they're trying to form into coherent ones, because there's, there's no coherence in that, it latched itself onto Crow as an idea of... Maybe he's been resurrected in some regard and he's back, but he's hiding himself once again. And then we get to this scene that we just had a minute ago with the mysterious man. And it's it's the color of his hair. And the fact his voice actor is clearly the same one as Crow. It's like, oh, I'm going to be right on that, aren't I? Again, do not confirm or deny. Because that is just a theory. I'd like to be proven wrong, but that's what I'm thinking right now. But I thought it's best to share that with you. I was waiting for this moment, the mysterious man, to show up before I actually speak anything about it, you know. So, anyway, I'm going to load the save that I made because it was pretty much I was standing here when I went off and did stuff and got some sepith and materials for the Great Bake Off quest and stuff like that. So we'll be right back in a second. There we go. Loaded the save. So, you can see, yeah, we've leveled up a bit. That's to be expected. But the amount of sepith we now have. So it's like, that's the best way to show you the sepith. I don't really know, actually. Not entirely sure, but I have changed things up. Thanks to the comments explaining a few things. I got here this obtained sepith from attacks and crafts. Very good. Plus the septium vein. Very, 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 very good with Reen. So thank you for that. Thank you for that. Because now we've got loads of stuff sorted. All, all the stuff opened up, which is fantastic. I'm not 100% on some of these quartzies yet. I've got many of the SR that I can. And like Mute 3, got Mute 2 and Mute 3 there equipped. Because I like the idea of muting stuff. And we have quite a high chance now as a result of that. The only one I've not done anything else on with, like in terms of getting up the quartz, is Altina. Because I can get SRs and stuff like that here. And it's just very much... I'm not ready to do that yet because if I keep doing that I'm going to level up way too much way too much but I do have a lot of sepith at this point but what I'm missing is you materials I know where I can get some 
And I definitely know where I can get some, but it's just a case of I I'd have to basically kill stuff and get leveling up and stuff like that. So it's sort of like yes, yeah. thanks. That's not what I wanted. I wanted help. There, so you can see how much sepith I've got. Yeah. So very 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 much thank you for that. So now we've got loads of sepith. It's very very good. Loads of mirror as well. But so. Like I said, it's like you, you can see that I, c I could get loads of other quartz, but I need the new materials. Again, I know where I can get loads, but I'd have to level up, and I don't want to do that. I'll, I'll go way beyond what I should be at this point, way beyond it, and it's too too tempting. Too tempting, but we're not going to do that. But that's us done for this part. In the next part, what we're going to do is wander around, speak to everyone, and probably head back to Crossbell at some point. We shall see how it lays itself out. So see you in the next part. Ta-ta for now.